My job really is to bring people together, shake hands, meet them, introduce, and uh, and uh, get on with it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, I'm enjoying it. It's a new chapter in my life, uh, one that uh, I'm learning very quickly. It's a fast learning curve. It's only my second trip over here in this uh, in my role, but uh, it's going very well. I'm enjoying it and. Uh, yeah, in some very interesting people. And you're meeting around 60 firms while you're, you are in Australia. So what sort of firms are you meeting? Uh, all sorts. Uh, from, um, we were in, uh, we were in cent uh, central Queensland yesterday over at the Gold Coast, um, really enjoying it, um, the amount of uh, initiative that's going on there. Everyone's very excited about the Olympics in 32. And so everyone started to build in that direction. So we're meeting people that are all connected. There was 30 different uh, uh, businesses there yesterday. Uh, and I found it uh, very interesting. They, they were all uh, wanting to know how it will work. And my job, as I say, is just really to bring them all together uh, and let them get on with it. And it, it was very productive yesterday, a lot of interest. Uh, and I have to say that the mayor there, uh, Tom is very, very uh, proactive, and uh, I think if if everybody were to have that same attitude, this would be a very easy task. Now, one of the areas you are looking at is green finance and green energy. So, can Australia tap into Europe's need for more energy in the wake, especially of the war in Ukraine? Look, I think everybody at the moment is looking of a way to bring down uh, electricity prices or find another way around it. Um, yeah, the world's going through a transitional period at the moment. Uh, we were there, I saw um, engines being, uh, uh, batteries being designed for engines, for fridges, for anything and everything. And uh, it's, it's quite exciting. And um, where it all ends, I don't know. Uh, but uh, cleaner energy and at a more uh, cost efficient for the people in the street and the people living in the houses. I don't know what it's like here at the moment, but in the UK, some places it's tripling uh, per month in what it's costing for electricity. And I'm sure that that's, that can be, uh, it's not insurmountable that and we can actually get round it. So it's a, the beauty of all this is that with Australia and England now having this uh, free trade agreement, we can actually bring minds together. Now you mentioned the UK-Australia free trade agreement. It's been uh, signed off on. Is it, does it take on greater importance now for the UK because of Brexit? Well, first and foremost, there wouldn't be a free trade agreement if, it, if England was still, uh, the United Kingdom was still in uh, the EU. Uh, the EU uh, was the reason that, this is the first time uh, there's been a trade, uh, free trade agreement between England and Australia. And uh, I am the first, uh, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm the first uh, trade envoy. And I find that quite bizarre when you think that we've, you know, we stood toe to toe in world wars, We've uh, played sports together ferociously at times, uh, and it's just a logical, uh, for me, I was amazed that it hasn't happened before. So, yeah, I think it's, um, it's very important. Now, do you think there's much scope for the uh, value of the trading relationship in dollar terms to improve? Of course, China is Australia's biggest trading partner. Two-way trade worth more than $200 billion. The two-way trade figure between the UK and Australia is something like $30 billion. Is there much scope to increase the value of trade between the UK and Australia? Well, I think that's what we're all here for. I think it's to enhance uh, the, worldwide. I'm not just thinking about uh, what's going on between here and China uh, and England and uh, Australia and Canada and all these other countries. You know, at the end of the day, uh, we're all here to, to better ourselves and I think a better standard of living for uh, the people of both countries. So, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I think uh, this is very much in its infancy. We need, it'll grow and it'll grow very quickly. Now, of course, Lord Botham, you are very well known as, in Australia as a world-renowned former Test cricketer. So we can't go without asking a cricket question on, on behalf of the ABC sports team. How much of a threat to cricket in countries like England and Australia are new domestic leagues like that in the United Arab Emirates and the big broadcast deal in the Indian Premier League? Look, you know, these, these things have all uh, been around for a while. They're not new. And um, I think England, we're under, we've got new uh, management now. We've got new captain. 
Um, we're playing very positive cricket, aggressive cricket. Um, so, yeah, I, I look, I think you, you, you set the standards by your international team. And if the international team is doing well, then the rest of the country usually does well in the cricketing world. So, um, yeah, whether it's uh, the girls um, uh, playing and, you know, that's become very competitive now. Uh, we're building stadiums for that in the UK uh, to, to make it more uh, girl friendly, lady friendly. Uh, so yeah, look, the, the game is growing and advancing. I don't think the IPL, which has been for around for a long time, there's ways around it. Um, you have the big bash over here. Uh, in England, we've just uh, introduced the 100, uh, which was very, very well uh, accepted by the public. And it also brought a, a new generation, a younger generation to the grounds. The scoreboard, for instance, was much simpler. Uh, basically, you had three columns, and that's all you had to look at. That was runs required, runs now, and wickets, and balls, you know, and balls left. So very, very simple. And um, the hundred was a massive success. And I think that uh, I think you just got to keep playing, and you've got to get involved. You got to, as a as a as a country. But the great thing is, it's the younger generation that's been brought through by the hundred uh, competition, which stands the game in good stead. But it really changes the centre of power, doesn't it, from the traditional custodians such as the UK and Australia to emerging areas of the world such as India and the UAE. Oh, I don't see the UAE and India running the game of cricket, not, uh, not uh, for, uh, by a long way, because at the end of the day, uh, the main format of the game is called Test Cricket. And Test Cricket is called Test Cricket because it tests every faculty of the game mentally, physically, over five days. And uh, that is still very much uh, England, Australia, England, India. Everybody that plays cricket wants to do well in the test arena. So I think that the test cricket will keep us all together. Now, just finally, Australia very sadly lost some cricketing greats this year. Shane Warne and Rod Marsh. What are your reflections? Uh, Andrew Simons as well. Uh, Dean Jones not that long ago. In England, we've had the same problems. We're getting to that age, I think. But... Bob Willis, Mike Hendrick, uh, Alan Eagleston, uh, just the three that come off the top of my head. It's, um, yeah, it's been a tough year for sport. Uh, a lot of good friends have uh, passed away. The people I played a lot against and with, um, so they're all fondly remembered. But uh, yes, it's been a tough year for all cricketing supporters, uh, not just the players, but the supporters of the game as well. Lord Botham, thank you for your time. Pleasure.